The idea of measuring something abstract such as human emotion has been around for quite some time now. While we still don't have a way to measure emotions, we do have a way to determine one's intellect. Of course, I'm talking about the IQ test. Today, I want to discuss just what it means to have 200 IQ. Theoretically, the highest amount of IQ one can have. First off, some background info. IQ, for those who don't know, stands for Intelligence Quotient. It is a concept thought out by 1900 French psychologist Alfred Benet, who wanted to test out the median intellect of children with mental disabilities in school, so that he could devise the best ways for them to learn. This technique was further elaborated by Louis Terman, and proved to be quite effective when determining the positions soldiers had in World War I in order to bring out each soldier's fullest potential. According to Benet, the formula that one's IQ is determined is by one's chronological age divided by their mental age, finally multiplying the result by 100. Chronological age of course means your physical age. Mental age however is tricky to define. It is measured to be the average score in which a particular age of population scores on an IQ test. So typically, if you're 18 years old, your mental age should be also be 18, because you have the average mental intellect of an 18-year-old. However, it's completely possible that your mental age is higher or lower than your actual age, and this is precisely what an IQ test measures. The measure of human IQ is measured in a bell-shaped graph. In psychology, this is known as a standard deviation. As you can see, the average median for IQ is sitting at 100, which means the average human has an IQ of 100. This does match with Benet's formula. 18 divided 18 is 1, times 100 is 100. However, if your mental age is different than your actual age, the result will be different. Say you're 18 years old, but taking an IQ test gives you the result that you have the intellect of a 19-year-old. Your expected IQ will then be 105 when rounded down. According to the graph, two-thirds of humans score between a 15-point difference from 100, which means two-thirds of us have an IQ between 85 and 115. Anyone that scores below 85 will be considered mentally disabled. Scoring between 115 and 129 will mean you're exceptionally bright. Anything higher will indicate that you are a natural genius. If you want to try it out for yourself, I have links to your IQ tests in the description to get you started. If you look closely at the IQ bell curve, you'll notice that the amount of people scoring higher and lower gets progressively fewer, almost reaching zero as they move down the line. When calculated, the highest amount of IQ that can be deemed significant enough to be plausible by the bell curve is around 194.6, which means that theoretically it's actually technically impossible for humans to achieve 200 IQ. However, there has been a select number of people in this world that have proven science wrong. Of course, we all know about Albert Einstein and our beloved Stephen Hawking, both scoring an average of 160 IQ which is already an unprecedented result. However, there has been people that have gone above the call of duty. As of today, January 12, 2019, the person with the highest IQ in recorded history belongs to the American known as William James Sidis, achieving a score between 250 and 300 IQ. William was a person beyond what people would call a genius. At the age of five, he had already fluently mastered over seven languages, including English, Hebrew, Greek, French, and German. He was admitted to Harvard University at the age of 11, then pursued a life of politics after graduation. Sadly though, his career never took off, and he died at a very young age. He wasn't able to make any kind of significant fortune before his death. If we were to calculate William's mental age with Binet and Terman's formula, a simple algebra formula would reveal that William's mental age is 63.25. I'm using 275 because it's the median for his estimated IQ, and 23 since that's the median number for his chronological age. This result means that William has the typical intellect of a 63-year-old when he was just 23 years old. What does this look like exactly? I have no idea. 
Keep in mind, humans don't get progressively smarter as we age, since, you know, people get old, and our brains won't function as well as we were younger. Next in line is Terence Tao, an Australian-American mathematician who had already received a PhD at the age of 20. His IQ sits at a comfortable 230. He is currently working at the University of California. Marilyn Vols Savant is the third placeholder, clocking in at an IQ of 228. She won the Guinness World Record in 1986 for the person with the highest consistent IQ. She currently owns a magazine column in which she answers people with their life drama. Link to said column in the description if you're interested. There are numerous other people that came close to the people mentioned above, but we're not gonna go over them in detail since this is in the list video. So what does it mean to have 200 IQ yourself? Well, the first thing to be aware of is that IQ comes from instinct. It's not something that you can study for. According to the formula, you will have to reach the mental age twice as your physical age. So if you're 18, you will need to have the mental intellect of a 36-year-old. Yeah, good luck with that. To reach the level of William James Sidis, you would have to win odds that are way more than winning the jackpot at the lottery. Although, you can achieve the same result if you watch Rick and Morty. I'm joking, of course, don't actually do that. One last thing I want to touch on is that we humans as a species are actually becoming smarter. According to researcher James R. Flynn, from a 2013 TED talk, he says how the average IQ from humans are steadily growing. And it's not just that we have many more people in cognitively demanding professions. The professions have been upgraded. Compare the doctor in 1900, who really had only a few tricks up his sleeve, with a modern general practitioner or specialist with years of scientific training. People simply dub this effect the Flynn effect. He suggests that modern humans inherit less intelligence from our ancestors. Instead, we're learning to be smarter because of all the technological advancements in today's society. Considering that humans are the most intelligent species on this planet, I can only hope to imagine what the future has in store for us.